Okay, so our next task number three with conditional advertisement, this is where things get a little more interesting. So we need to configure R2 to advertise R7 loopback 10 through 12 to R4 as long as it's received a route to R5 loopback 12. So there's a condition that needs to be met before we can advertise R7 loopback. And then we need to verify the configuration by shutting down R5 loopback 12. So again, going back to our diagram here, R2 is receiving all the R7 loopback from R7 and normally would advertise to R4, we said that that can only happen when R5 loopback 12 route is being received by R2, otherwise R2 would not advertise this route to R4. Okay, so let's run with that first. Now, before we do anything, just to prove that R4 can ping right now, R7, loopback 10, from his loopback 10, and then if you do a trace route to 7701 sourcing from loopback 10, you can see that it goes directly from R4 to R2 and then to R7. So now we're going to be doing our configuration on R2. Before we start with our configuration, let's do IP BGP D, uh, debug IP BGP update so we can monitor BGP activity. So what we need to come up with now is two route maps that first will match the existence of R5 loopback 12 as our condition, as well as the R7 loopback that we're going to be advertising based on that condition. So let's come up with the prefix list first for R5 loopback 12. And then we're going to match R5 loopback 12, which is 5520 slash 24. Next, we're going to create a prefix list for R7 loopback interface. We'll call R7 underscore LO with the permit of 7700 and to include all three leadbacks on R7, we can just do slash 22 less than equal to 24 since we know that all those routes have the length of 24. Next, we need to create a route map. And the first one is to determine the existence of R5 leadback 12. So we'll call it exist R5 LO12 permit 10 and then we match IP address prefix list R5 back 12. The second route map is the route map that will determine what route will needs to be advertised when that condition is met. So route map, let's call it advertise R7 LO permit 10 and match IP address prefix list copy paste R7 loopback. Now we can get under router BGP 100 we said this is specifically geared towards a uh, route being advertised to R4. So neighbor is 172.16.123.4. And the command that we need is called advertise map right here, which is specify route map for conditional advertisement. So we're going to enforce a condition for the route being advertised to R4. And the way it reads is we're going to advertise, let's see, uh, uh, R7 loopback, so let me match it by this route map, as long as the R5 loopback 12 exists by the mean of this exist map. Okay, somehow our condition for R5 loopback 12 has changed to withdraw, so that means it cannot find R5 loopback 12. So let's uh, double check on that. So that would be 5520, and clearly that's in the BGP table. Let's do show IP prefix list. And for some reason, we're not getting any hits on that. So let's try to investigate uh, why. And that's the reason why it went to withdraw. Oh, it looks like I used the wrong exist map right there. So let's fix that. So take that back. And it should have been exist uh, R5 loopback 12. I guess I was using the prefix list uh, name. So let's try that one more time. And let's try to kind of force that by clearing the BGP. 123.4. Then give it a second here. Looks like it's still not matching. Let me try to show IP BGP neighbor. 
16123.4 and let's look for condition. Uh, looks like I didn't take the command. Well, let's try that one more time then. Neighbor 162.16.123.4 Advertise map. Let's see if I can find the route map right here. And then exist map, which is called exist r5 loopback 12. Okay, we just got more log messages and right here this is what I was looking for condition for exist r5 loopback 12 has changed to advertise that means the condition has been met and the route as that was part of the advertise map has been advertised so right now let me do up arrow okay so looking for the we're looking at the routes that's being advertised by r2 to r4 as you can see right here, the R7 loopback interfaces are currently being advertised. And then let me just do up arrow and do the command show IPBGP neighbor include condition. And right here, condition map exists R5 loopback 12 and advertise map status right now is advertised. That means the condition has been met. All right, so now let's uh, perform our test by shutting down R5 loopback 12. Just to see what happened when that condition is no longer met with the existence of R5 loopback 12. So let me jump over to R5 and then loopback 12 shut. Okay, so we're going to go back to R2, give it a couple seconds for R2 to react to the change. But obviously, R5 has already withdrawn the route from R2. Okay, there you go. So here, our condition for exists R5 loopback 12 has now changed to withdraw. And let me do up arrow and look for the uh, show IPBGP neighbor and then look for the word condition. You can see status is went from advertise to withdraw. And that means if you look at the routes that's being advertised to R4 right now, we should not be seeing R7 loop back 10 through 12, which we are not. Okay, so going back to the diagram, since R2 is no longer sending R7 loop back interfaces to R4, that means the only way that R4 can get to R7 loopbacks is through AS200. So now let's see if that's the case. If you do show IP BGP on R4, see R4 is still seeing R7 loopback IPs, but it actually has to go through AS200. Okay, it looks like it picks R3 as a preferred path. So if we now do a trace to 7701 loopback 10 for a source. You can see since we have the load balancing configured in the previous task, it load balance between six and three, and then it goes through one, two, and then seven. Okay, so basically the traffic has been rerouted to AS200 and then 100 to go towards R7. All right, so let's put that back by bringing that back up on R5. Okay, so the next section said we need to configure R3 to refrain from advertising R3 and R6 loop back 10 through 12 to R1 unless R4 is down. And the way to identify whether or not R4 is down is by its loopback 10. So we're going to basically monitor the status of R4 loopback 10 and then we're going to verify that the AS100 can reach AS200 through R4 when the route is up and then switch using R3 when the R4 is down. You know, that's, uh, that sounds kind of confusing so let's go back to the diagram. So basically what R3 is going to do is to monitor for R4, let's see, loop back 10. So as long as R3 can receive the R4 loop back 10, it would not advertise its own loop back routes as well as the R6 uh, loop back interfaces to R1. So that way everything gets forced through R4. But as soon as the R4 loop back 10 disappear from the routing table, R3 will start the advertisement. So it acts like a backup router or let's use this particular link as the backup link, if you will. All right, we're going to achieve that through our conditional advertisement. So similar to what we just did on R2, we're going to have to come up with two separate route maps, one for matching a route that we are monitoring, which is R4 loop back 10 in this case, and the other one that's matching the route that R3 is going to advertise to R1 when the R4 loop back 10 disappear from this routing table. So getting on to R3, let's do debug IP BGP updates. 
have that ready to go and then come up with the prefix list that will match our for loop back 10. That would be 4400 slash 24. And then come up with a another prefix list that will match R6 and R3 loop back interface. So R3, let's call it R3, R6. Loop back, permit, first match the R3 loop back slash 22, less than equal 24. And then the other line for our six loop back. So 6600 slash 22 less than the equal 24. In route map, so instead of exist, this time it's going to be, we're going to call it non exist because we do not want the R4 loop back 10 to exist. So non exist R4 loop back 10 permit and then match IP address prefix list there. And then another wrap map for our advertise uh, 3 R6 loop back permit 10 match IP address prefix list. There you go. Now to complete the configuration we go under router BGP for R3 is AS200. And the command that we need is just like what we had earlier, going towards neighbor R1. So it will be 16.123.1 with the advertise map. So these are the routes that we would like to advertise. Maybe the question mark before we use the exist map this time, we're going to condition based on something that's not in the routing table. So we're going to be using non exist map. Okay, and we're going to tie that to the route map for non exist R4 loopback 10. Okay, give it a second. Okay, and here's our debug message. For the condition, because the condition is not met, the route is being withdrawn because right now, R3 is still seeing R4 loop back 10. If you show IP BGP 4400 right here in this routing table. And that's why if you do show IP BGP neighbor 162.16.123.1 include condition, the current status is withdraw. Okay, at the same time, if you do show IP BGP neighbor, let's actually do up arrow and then do the Look at the advertisement of the routes that the R3 is sending to R1. As you can see, the R3 is only sent the default route and R4 loopback routes and not R3 or its own loopback routes or R6. So right now R1 is not receiving any R3 or R6 loopback routes from R3. That means the only way to get to those is through R4. Okay, and we can double check that by Hopping on to R2 and do a show IP BGP and condition based on a route that's coming or passing through AS200. You can see right here, R3 and R6 loopback addresses, it's reachable only through R4. Okay, and let's do a quick test using trace route on R5 to R3 loopback 10. And, and Obviously, it's going through R2, R4, and then R3, as well as the R6 loop back 10. It's also using the exact same path. Okay, so now what we're going to do next is to test our configuration by shutting down R4 loop back 10 to simulate R4 going down and see if the R3 will start advertising route and passing the traffic being a backup route. All right, so on R4 loop back 10, shut. Let's go and monitor R3. See the route has already been withdrawn from R3. And right there, condition for non exist R4, loopback 10 has changed to advertise now that the R4 loopback is no longer in the R3 routing table. Okay, let's double check on the condition right here change from withdraw to advertise. And now going back to R2, actually. Even before that, let's see if we really, or R3 is really advertising. 
its route. There you go. So it's uh, it's advertising its own route. Obviously, we no longer see our four loopback ten, which is four four zero zero, and it's also advertising our six loopbacks interfaces. Going back to R two, let me up arrow. As you can see now, R two is receiving route in addition to from R four. It's also receiving route from R one. Going back to R five, and do a trace. And R5 should now be preferring R3 for the reason that the AS path, uh, the length for the AS path is shorter coming this way. If you do show IP BGP, as you can see right here, it's only using, or the path is only passing through 200. So actually, it's not too clear over here. We have to look at right there. So the way R2 is seeing it, which is the same way that R5 is, it's shorter to get to AS200 through R1, hence R3, then going through R4. And that's why R5 is preferring the route through R1, R3. Same thing for the 6601. It's going to R1, then R3, then eventually R6. Okay, so that's pretty much accomplishes our task right here that the R3 will advertise its own route and R6 routes when the R4 is down. So conditional route advertisement is just one of the many features that the BGP has that might not be available on other routing protocols. And we're going to look at more features like this in the next video, which is route summarization. So that wraps up our video on BGP advanced route advertisement. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.